Hi, good night. Cafetiere Labrish with Mona Indefatigable Heights. Good night, good night, good night. Okay, guys. So I have quite a few things in store for you tonight. Um, my first video we're going to do is going to be on Encore. BET presents Encore. All right. Um, these are the ladies of Encore. Um, these are all the um, cast members of Encore. Nine women came into the house um, of this BET um, reality show that is giving the woman a chance to um, form a girl group, a super girl group, and come together and form one group as people who all have been parts of a group, or in the case of Nivea, she was a solo artist, but excuse me, they put all these artists together to try to create something new and give us a new sound. Now, the show, I wanted to talk about it because it ties in with the conversation we've been having about the meat, the entertainment industry and um, seeing our stars, you know, presented before us in the present. All right. So Encore is a group of female artists that were either in girl groups or whatever the situation is. We have here um, Felicia Ir Irish, Keely, um, Fallon and Felicia. I, I don't know them apart. It's, I was getting confused. Shamari, Pam, Nivea, and on the previous, we had um, Aubrey O'Day. So I finally watched Encore, guys. I watched the whole um, season yesterday. It was very nice. Um, and I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to see how, you know, how they present, you know, women of, you know, um, past endeavors today. First up, we have Nivea. Nivea was a solo art. Nivea is a solo artist. Um, very beautiful. She... Um, has a child with um, Lil Wayne, and she was married to The Dream. She came out as a solo artist. Maybe I believe she was 15 years old, and um, she's a very good artist. Um, she can sing, sing, sing. Um, I would love to hear Nivea's a new album of hers and all of these things. Um, Nivea, this is what Nivea, um, when she was an artist, when she first came out, um this is Nivea today this is what she looks like and this is Irish and um here we have Irish and Felicia two sisters they were in the group uh 702 Nivea sing um don't mess with my man I don't know if you remember that song along with other songs but that was one of the biggest songs and she did a song named Laundromat that everybody loved it was our follow-up song to Don't Mess With My Man. Um, Irish and Lamisha, Lamisha um, were from 702, the group 702. This is Irish. Um, this is Nivea popping up in my, in my thing because I wanted to show Nivea as she is today. She's beautiful. Um, she was wonderful on the show, a woman of light and... Um, very fun and just made everything, you know, happy. All right. So this is the group 702. This is Irish. This is Irish and Misha, the two that were on the show. She was on the show. I forgot her name, honestly, but she was the lead singer. Initially when they had the group, she, um, Jera, Jera, bring my phone. It's in the kitchen. Initially, when they had the group, she was the lead singer, and she had left. They said, and when they left, when she left, the group fell apart. They didn't really have, you know, as much um, opportunities as they had done together. Um, they sing the song. Um, 
Where My Girls At, From the Front to Back. Yeah, that song, along with many others, but that was the song they, that I love from this group. Um, this is Misha and Irish, you know, recently. Very beautiful woman, very beautiful woman, um, very talented woman, woman who can sing, women who are timeless, women who are classic. I, I just showed two of them together because I, I didn't want to show them in the present as a group because they came into Encore as themselves. They were backup sing They were considered to be backup singers. And when you're considered to be a backup singer in the industry, once the artist goes solo or the group, you know, breaks down, you know, usually backup artists, they don't, they don't have any opportunities like that. And if it's a group of three people, it shouldn't be backup artists. But I guess you have a lead singer and then you have backup. I don't know. This is Pam. Pam is from the group Total. Um, thank you. Pam is from the group Total. She was in Total. Um, um, honestly, uh, I'm going to just tell you now. Pam is my favorite. <laughs> Pam is my favorite. Um, um, hold on. Let me just give it to you. Um, good. See, want to find the ladies. Um, Irish and Lamisha Grinstead. Irish and Lamisha Grinstead. And Nivea is, she's a one name artist like Beyonce. It was Nivea. You find Nivea anywhere. Look her up. Look out for her songs and her voice. Because, oh my God, y'all got to go watch the show if you haven't watched it already. Just to hear our artists sing. Like, to get, like, oh my God, we only get clips, but when you get the clips, you get an idea of how much talent we have just sitting out there that we never hear because all this new talent being given to us just doesn't have the voices that we're looking for. So these people were um, being showcased on BET's The Encore. Um, Pam from Total. Excuse me. Her name isn't Pam. Her name is Kim Kima. Pamela. Pamela Long. The group was a group of three girls, um, Kima, Keisha, and Pam, Pamela Long. They sing songs like, Total Help Me See, Total Help Me See, What About Us, What About You, What About Me, uh, mm -hmm. Total Help Me See, Total Help Me See. And they sing another song that I love with, um, they sing a song with Foxy Brown. Um, you know that song? I can't ride you no more. And Foxy be like, I ain't with you. You want some bullshit? I kissing you. All right. They did uh, No One Else. Um, this is my favorite group. Uh, what About Us? Um, um, feature Missy Elliott, a uh, couple other songs. You know what? Um, let me see the one way, Foxy. Uh, the one with Foxy Brown. No One Else. They had a song called No One Else, and they had a song with Foxy called I Can't. And she's like, I can't ride you no more. Yes, that's one of my favorite songs. All right, so as you know, Pam is my favorite on the um, BET Encore, just letting you know. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit deeply about it. Now, you have Pam, and you have, um, I'm going to tell you, what really, like, what is causing me to talk about this. 
when you have an artist that has sold millions and millions of copies and they are million dollar um, net worth and things of that nature, um, you can be an artist, you can be a star, you can be someone who has sold millions of dollars of uh, music, platinum selling artists and all these things and still be, you know, rejected, right? So we have a channel like BET and for BET to bring these women back is an awesome thing. So I could understand receiving a phone call like, hey, you know, we want you to come on the show. You know, we want, you know, we want the work modern world to hear your talent. We want to, you know, people, you know, your fans are, you know, waiting to hear you come back, you know, a new group. It's not going to be the same. And, you know, a fresh perspective and everything. And, you know, receiving that phone call, you're like, oh, yeah, no, definitely. Or if, you, you know, to audition or to show up or whatever it is, you know, the invitation for, you know, to be, um considered for uh you know a show like this is awesome right so for the ladies uh lamisha and irish it wasn't so great and for all for most of the ladies it wasn't really great because you know these are our past you know um stars these are not you know these people are blown up and they're like you know most of the time you know we're like where are they now if you probably could find a show where are they now you know you have a lot of um, YouTube videos talking about Total and talking about Black and talking about 702 and 3LW and all of this. Um, it's always going to be that because they're timeless. These are timeless groups. They're, these are timeless people. These are timeless uh, entertainers um, that still entertain, that still do music, that still do, um, you know, they're, ta they're still are using their talent, you know, somewhere in their areas of life. Even if we're not hearing the albums, even if we're not buying the albums, even if we're not streaming the modern day uh, content. However, um, the house started with two sisters and the two sisters are, this is Pam here. I love Pam. So of course, you know, this is Keely. I'm going to go into who everybody is and then I'm going to give you an idea of what happens in the show. So you could go watch it and, um, you know, you can always comment. You can always tell me what you think if you watch it already. Remember, guys, um, all all of my all of my uh, content is for entertainment purposes only. Um, just to let you know, um, anything that I speak about cafeteria lavish is factual, and I believe it. Anything that um, I speak about any other person is allegedly and doesn't necessarily reflect the views of cafeteria lavish. Just for the disclaimer. All right, so just to let you know, this is Keely. Keely is from the group 3LW. This is the girl group 3LW. This is Keely in the middle. She's also from the group Cheetah Girls because uh, Notori had left the group. This is Notori. She's a current star right now. She's on, you know, all of the um, great movies. Let me see what Notori is in. You've probably seen Notori present day. Um, this is Keely. Keely was, she had some problems because she had a fight with uh no baby i'm using it i'm using it to make my video this time when i'm finished with it i'll give it to you all right yeah i'm using this laptop because this whole program i have to find a good program to do my videos on which i'm searching for that so when i do it'll be better because it's just always about progressing for me but the Dell computer, it now nah, give me the screen recording thing when me I deal with for sure the video them. If me I do the video by myself, like sit down in an in another little studio when we create <laughs> and do my video, it's alright. But if me I do the presenting when my wife are present and showing the picture of the people them, then I have to use this one. So anyway, um Natori, um let's see. One moment. I don't want to make it too long. Notori, not from the girl group 3LW, and she has been in Fame, Notorious. She played Little, Little Kim. She was in the Playboys Club, and she's been in Power, Ghost, you know, all those great movies. So Notori left to pursue a solo career. And um, 
This is Keely. Keely and Adri Adriana. Adrian. Adrian Bylin. You know her. She's on the show of the daytime talk show. So Keely here is in the encore. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Um, she had a bit of a humiliation moment, ritual type moment when she went viral for throwing a bucket of chicken on, you know, Notori, the dark skin one and uh, has been known for that. And that meme has played and played and played a million times. Here um, we have Danny Kane. So we have um, Aubrey O'Day. Aubrey O'Day is in the show. But to be honest, I didn't even know which one of them named Aubrey. Aubrey O'Day, she's in the show. This girl can sing. She can blow. She can really blow. She can sing, sing. You know, Toto was controlled by Diddy. Danny D. Kane was controlled by Diddy, signed by Diddy. I don't know who else was signed by Diddy, but I know they were signed by Bad Boy. Um, this we we all know Danny D. Kane because Bad Boy did making of the band in front of us, and we seen how the group was put together and everything. His two, he had formed more than one group, so we seen how his type of um, um approach into a group or or a girl group or boy group situation is. So here's Danny D. Kane. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. The reason why I didn't know who, what Aubrey O'Day really looked like, is because she done changed her face so many times. They, this woman here, is the person we see today. Um, so uh, I think this is Aubrey. I think that's Aubrey. I don't need all the plastic surgery. Who can tell? Here they are again. And I believe this one is Aubrey. She was the star. And um, Aubrey has been in the news. She put on a lot of weight, right? And there was some body shaming going on because she went. a picture of hers went viral on IG where she, you know, put on a lot of weight and everything. And she did another a photo shoot to show what, you know, what her body really, body image for herself is really like. And, you know, people were shaming her, but she don't care. And she's also a person that knows that really stands up for herself. Those they say she's you know a little off, which everybody is. And her time on the show was very interesting. So I'm gonna get into the show after I let you know who these people are. Here she is today, Aubrey O'Day. This is Aubrey. All right, we have Shamari Devo. Uh she was in the group black they think boom like an 808 making circles like a figure eight. yeah that one along with more other songs but i'm just giving you the song that i know them for they stands out to me but you're a fan you know and you know better than me all right shamari is a beautiful woman she's married to mr um devoe from uh the group um new edition so her husband is a music legend as well and she's a legend herself here she is um also just to know she was in real housewives of atlanta i believe she was there for one season um and i loved watching her on this show because i watched her on uh real housewife of atlanta and i know that she gets a little, you know, tipsy. And she got tipsy Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I think that's why she didn't come back. Um, season 11 of, Real, of um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, which was a very, very nice season. She brings a fresh perspective. I don't know what happened to her on Encore because she just tried to keep herself out of the way it seemed like. I don't know how this was put together. We're going to talk about it. Um, Here's Shamari. She's beautiful. She can sing. She can really sing. Everybody on this show that they presented before us can really sing. That's one thing that I can tell you. Um, the Okay, so I can get there yet. I can get there yet. This is her. She always had that young, fresh face look. Yeah, but she this, this is her, um, her, her um, group member. She also came in the show to support her because they had a performance. Um, 
here's her with her husband, Mr. DeVoe. He's really like very, let me say, watching um Shamari and um her husband in the Real Housewives of Atlanta and also just the short clips of him in the Encore. I will say that he's a supportive husband, very supportive. And she is very like respectful of him, of his legend, like his status as a legend and where he, where, where, what his legacy is. And she makes it known. She's not a person that's like, oh baby, you know, you know how some people are like, oh, I'm the star. Like, you know, you, you know, there's a famous, um, um, image of, of um, Brad Pitt and Angelina, Angelina Jolie on the red carpet. And when things were like souring and, you know, they walk out and, and you know, they're like, Brad, Angelina, Angelina, Brad. And she steps forward for the paparazzi to take her pictures because she's the star and she's more of a star than him. And you could tell. And it ain't no question of partnership of the status of what we share. It's I know who. I am, and I'm going to show it today. So for that reason, I'm going to tell you, um, this couple here, I like their dy dynamic because they seem like they keep it real with each other. And that's one thing they talk about, like everything she like, she talks about, you know, being bisexual and, you know, her past relationships and, you know, past relationships in the industry. She talked about that in Real Housewives of Atlanta. And, you know, they talked about stuff. You could tell he didn't really like that she was exposing certain things. And so, but still, he gave her, you know, them people that will correct you behind doors, but not in front of people. He's that kind of husband. And I like that about him. And so I don't know, like, their backstory. I don't know how deep their backstory is. I don't care because for what I see, I see him being supportive to her and I see her being supportive to him. Like, if he had a chance to do, because um, see, I think he still tours every now and then. I don't know. But, excuse me, I feel like he supports her, like, whatever she's doing. Like, he's supporting her in her walk of fame. Like, because of her talent and, like, her opportunities and how they got cut short because our groups, you know, fumble. And um, because of the voice that she has, like, they're trying to get her seen now. I don't, I don't, I don't blame her for leaving um, Real Housewives of Atlanta because it was just too much. And it's kind of messy. And then you're drinking. And then they take advantage of you drinking a reality show and show, you know, stuff like you don't want to be seen as. And people are not feeling that. But this show right here, I'm not even going to lie. Shamari was MIA for half of the show. Um, Shamari made sure that none of her tea came out. She made sure that she was not in any drama. And she made sure that every time something was popping off, she was kind of like missing because she didn't put no two cents in it because she came to come and from the beginning to the end. All right. This sister... Um, these people are, um, uh, let me see if I could tell today. Let me see. Uh, wait. <laughs> Oh, God, help me with. With. I don't know. These people are twins. Felicia and Fallon. And they look alike. And I, 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 I'm, I, I never took that. I'm sorry. I did not learn to tell them apart. Um, Misha call them freaking freck. They really behave like freaking freck. I'm just going to tell you. This is Mrs. Miss King. Felicia, Fallon, I ain't sure. That's one. This is the other. Felicia and Fallon. Fallon and Felicia, whichever they are. These are them. Felicia and Fallon King. So if I look at this picture, Felicia and Fallon. If I look at that picture, this is Fallon and this is Felicia, I believe. Yeah, I think so. They are from the girl group Cherish. I don't know the group. Never heard about them before. I may have heard about them before, but I never listened to them before. I don't know no song they write. I don't know no song they sing. I don't know them. Yeah. I ain't know them. I'm sorry. I'm, maybe I'm old. I'm from an era. They, I don't know them and I don't know them. And I don't know them. This the whole group. 
I seen them before. I may have seen them on a music video or something, but I don't know them. I was never fans of them. I don't know where they came from. I don't know where they went, and I don't know where they're going. The two in the middle are twins. These two sisters, Fallon and uh, Felicia. And to be honest with you, it seemed like they were all in a group. But if I check their behavior, it seemed like the uh, one of these sisters was the lead singer. And I don't know who these are, but um, the two sisters I have left the group and they are now singing by themselves and moving forward in this framework. There go the four sisters again, the two in the middle are the twins and the two in the end, I believe they're older sisters and they left and are not pursuing modeling, um, singing anymore. Here are the two, Felicia and Fallon again. Mm -hmm. Here they are again, Felicia and Fallon. Let's talk about Felicia and Fallon. Felicia and Fallon are two of the rudest people I ever met in my life on national TV or any type of TV, honey. B uh, BET brought these people in. I don't know what was the agreement. I don't know what was the conversation. I don't know what the contracts say, but from the gate, they were rude. Okay. They were uh, condescending. Okay. They were ageist. All right. Very disgusting behavior. Very disgusting. The audacity of these people. I cannot tell you enough. These people are the epitome of people who will hug you and stab you in the back at the same time. These people right here now. Allegedly. Allegedly watching the reality show. Um. They were the first in the house. I don't know why they were the first in the house. So they established themselves in the house. They were the first in the house. I don't know who they with. I don't know what they do. I don't know. And everybody that came into the house, they sized them up. All right. So remember earlier I told you about um, Irish and Misha. Glenstead, right? These are them in the show. Irish and Lamisha. These are them in BET Encore. They came in looking like this. And the girls came in looking like this. And I just told you that these people are from a group, 702. 702, they catalog. I may have mentioned one song or two songs, but their catalog is a long list, all right? And they have accomplishment. They're talented. And when their group broke up with the lead singer going off, I don't know, because when she came on the show, she, she was hoarse and she really didn't have a voice like that. So I don't know if something happened to her voice, why she don't sing no more or why the group, you know, disconnected or whatever. The woman can sing, all right? Um, 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 Misha, with the red hair, can blow, and Irish can also blow. But when you come into a, 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 an atmosphere like this, where you're coming into a place where you're coming to form a group with people that you've never met before who are, you know, all former stars like yourself, right? You don't expect that the first thing they're going to ask you is oh okay um oh what's what what group were you with oh i was with um 702 oh how does it feel to be from that era since you um these young ladies began asking those ages question uh, kind of questions and making statements like geriatric people and things like that to these legends And it just ties in for me with what I'm talking about with the industry, because I'm saying to the industry, like, okay, we're not hearing the artists. We're not seeing the artists. My Kelly Rowland video, and I'm talking about Kelly Rowland, hashtag free Kelly Rowland career. And I'm like, why are we not seeing Kelly Rowland on BET? Why are we not seeing Kelly Rowland in the media blogs, the black blogs and the black media and all of this stuff? And BET, great, great plan right? Bring our stars in. All right. Put them together. Form a super group. 
yeah, it's a reality show. Yeah, we're going to expect excitement. But the disrespect and the level of audacity and in consideration that was shown to these legends is foul. Very foul. I don't want to see my legendary artists, people from 702, people from Toto or whatever, being disrespected by a younger generation of artists who have come into the house as a sort of way to like win at the end. I didn't hear that it was a contest. And I watch reality shows. I didn't hear it was. I didn't see mother come in as RuPaul does and say, you know, at the end, whoever is left standing is going to win ten thousand dollars. And you know, you know, Annabelle Cos Anastasia Cosmetics or whatever. I never heard mother say, "You got to lip sync for your life and don't fuck it up." I didn't hear that. I didn't hear Sasha, you stay strong J away in the beginning of this show. I didn't hear anything that told me that this was a competition. And these people had to come in to fight for a position. I didn't hear that. And what was so hurtful is knowing that these women are coming from girl groups where you know what the industry is like. You know how the industry um, takes the, 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 the lead singer and, and promotes them and pushes them and markets them and just uses the backup singers as fodder like sheep or cattle. And once the lead singer reaches to the level that they want them to get to, now you have the backup singer without a job. Go live on, you know, your rights that you have, like whatever little bit you have. And, you know, you know, your streams from olden days or whatever. It was sad. It was very sad. Very, very, very sad. And to see them being disrespected, I mean, Mr. Carlos King, Mr. Producer, Mr. Carlos King, at Mr. Carlos King, Mr. Producer, please, I'm going to need you to do better. I'm going to need you. If you're going to do a, um, a, 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 um, it was, it was, it was very heavily laced, heavy on the, uh, the age bashing, heavy on the, uh, uh, the age shaming, heavy on the ageist behavior from these two women. I do not condone that. I do not accept that. I was very, very put off. Very put off. They came into the house. They established themselves in the house to be invaluable because this one says that she... Um, She's a producer. I don't see the credits. I don't see any credits saying Fallon or Felicia King rolling up the screen at the beginning of the end of the show. I don't know what occurred. Um, they came in. They, they, they started writing. And then them and Aubrey O'Day decided they, because of how they sound and because of how they look, they wanted to split the group of eight or nine people into two. They were agreeing with that because they already made up their minds that they only saw themselves with four other people in the group. Like they only saw themselves with four other people in the group. They didn't see themselves with everybody in the group when all were brought in to form a super group. So why did you invite them you, you 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 invited these people with the idea that they would be given an opportunity to showcase their talent which they've never got they came into the house having to fight you didn't we didn't get I didn't get that I didn't I didn't understand it and I didn't understand why my legends would have to be going through something like that like as a fan I just don't I'm disappointed like Um, imagine, <laughs> Aubrey came in swinging because in the first episode alone, I died laughing. I'm not even going to lie. 
because I guess one twin said she's a millionaire and Aubrey was like, I don't know how she's a millionaire with that fake clears bracelet. Like, no, do we? <laughs> yeah, I got to watch it. Nivea is, she's, I, just, I don't think she's a lush, but she's very funny and she's drinking and she's happy and she makes everybody laugh and have a good time. So I really like that. And I, I see why she 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 was with little wayne i see because it seemed like they got the same personality of two people that like to have fun and she looked like she had fun all day long right <laughs> um they started arguing with the girls and pam took her mask off when she first sat down and when the argument started pam put her mask Pam put her mask back on, okay? Because Pam was like, none of these uh, germs of girl group people, girl group squabbles is not is not going to penetrate my mask. That was funny. Um, the Cherry Sisters and the geriatric comments, I didn't like it at all. I, 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 I'm over it. Um, 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 then the next thing that I wanted to talk about, oh, they had Cedar's World in there. Cedar's World is coming back. I don't know if you know, if you watch BET, if you see what's going on, but they brought Cedar back. You know, Cedar, the um, the AI that BET was using as an as a host back in like 2015, 20, um, 1995, they brought Cedar back, new and improved Cedar. Cedar's World, because guess what? Everything is, you know, modern stuff is this uh, space age and, you know, everybody's going to space and we're going to space. Um, Hashtag Spice official. We'll be discussing her music video and giving you a video on that after this. So we have a lot to deal with. I'm also going to do a video on Justin's Cabaret. That's coming up next. So after this video, you're going to see the video with um, discuss, um, discussing Justin's Cabaret, the um, reunion. And I'm going to also give you the video about Spice's video for Senate Top. All right, um, so these two sisters made life very difficult. Um, they, they they continually argue with people and then they like argue with you and then like you get upset and then they come and they're like, oh my God, I don't want you to cry because I don't want you to feel like, you know, I'm coming at you because, you know, I'm sorry that I did this and I did that, but they are not sorry. They are, they allegedly these people are evil. Like for me personally, like if I look at, if I look at like the groups that they brought, excuse me. If I look at the groups that they brought, they brought to the encore, and I look at the people, the stars that it's like Shamari and Lamisha and Irish and Pam and. Lamisha, Irish, Pam, Shamari, Nivea. If I look at them five, I see humility. I see people that are humble even though they are people with money. I see people that are humble even though they are people with fame. I see people that are humble even though they are stars even though they are idols, even though they are people with a fan base, I see people that are humble. When I look at these two women, I, I don't see any humility in them. And the way they came into the house is to take control. It became about publishing. It became about like, I told you about these contracts. I, I don't know what happened to these women, okay? Wherever they coming from, but they came into this house like, okay, they were in a girl group that went really bad. And they were in a group with their sisters. These people were in a group with sisters. So I'm just trying to figure out if you are in a group with your sisters, why are you so combative? And I don't mean like, I'm not even getting to the man versus woman. I'm talking about woman versus woman. Why are you so combative? Why are you so combat combative about being in the group? Why do you, these women didn't want anybody else to sing with them. They had a whole argument with each other about them just wanting to be together on a song by themselves. Um, they didn't want everybody to be on every song. 
they weren't encouraging of each other to say, okay, you know what, you know, hey, you know, so-and-so needs a little bit more help. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into the studio with her and I'm going to push her, you know, let me and her work together for two days. No, you come out the gate talking about, oh, I just need you to sing from your, your diaphragm. Like, you know, just do it. Very rude, very rude. And I was disgusted. Oh, my lamb. <laughs> oh, my lamb. <laughs> In the words of Nivea, very, very disgusted. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, so they had a producer. His name is Cosign. They had another guy. Cosign and another guy started out the 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 the, the, the musical part, like the producing and so on. I don't know what occurred. They are arguing. They having arguments. They clicked up with Aubrey. Then they clicked up against Aubrey. Then they clicked up with Aubrey. Then they mad at Aubrey. And when Aubrey came in, because of their voices, she's seen automatically where her strengths lay, lay where the strengths lie within that group. And so she tried to align herself with them because of their strength. But their strength is a strength that doesn't, it doesn't flow and gather, you know, people together as you're going. It's a strength that crushes people and pushes people out the way and pushes people our way. And that's not anything to aspire to. So when she began to see that, she began to understand. There was a, one of the producers of the um, production, he won a production, came into the house and I don't know what they were saying, like, I don't know if his name was Eric or something like that, but like they were like, oh. Initially, when the show started, when the producer came in, the way how they hugged him, hugged them, it was like they knew them, like they knew them personally. So you gave they gave that impression. And when the vocal coach came in and Shamari was like, Oh, she's been my vocal coach since I was 13 years old. I was like, okay, all right. So we already see connections in the production and the players so knowingly that production was telling people what was occurring too at the same time trying to stir a little bit of drama um he came in and he told aubrey that nobody understood why they were trying to take over because at the end of the day everybody else in the house sold more records than them everybody else in the house is more a star of the, than them even the backup singers even the backup singers child oh my god huh why freaking frank why i don't care how sing, how you sing i don't care how well you sing in the industry and it's been proven and it's been shown you don't even have to uh do what these people do in the industry all you have to do is give a little resistance like oh yeah i'm not singing that or i'm not wearing that outfit or whatever it is and you can find yourself out the industry with uh, a tag saying she lost her voice she can't sing no more she's difficult to work with she's aggressive she's an aggressive black woman and things of that nature okay bad enough that people could go through stuff like that but y'all come in with this attitude who you think you're gonna work with who you gonna work with felicia and felon i i was i was like i would have been like well you know what i know i could tell like what their group was like um whenever their group was um you know actively you know producing music because these two sisters must have ran the rest of the group away, but they was their own sisters. So I'm just trying to figure out where they got this animosity with other groups from. Where, where do you not get the idea of co cooperation and working together? Right? They took over everything. They wrote every song. They did everything. They didn't even like Misha writes and like just the way how they had her feeling like less than herself. She didn't she, it, it get, put you in an environment where you do not believe in yourself and your own talent, which you have. Right? The woman just didn't want to write the song because she didn't want to be criticized by them because she's criticized for her age, her looks, her appearance, you know, and all these things. And these are stars that don't have to deal with that because they don't deal with regular people on a regular day. No, they don't. These will only deal with their family. 
Your, your stars, they only deal with their families. Only their families know the real them or what their experiences are. They don't have to deal with people like us for us to know exactly what their lives are or what's going on. They don't have to deal with people being disrespectful. They, they keep it moving. They have their money. They don't have to deal with this. Yeah, they may not be eating like they want to eat, but they don't have to deal with this disrespect and these put downs. Huh? And these comments that are very hurtful between these two women. I was very disgraced um, that black women could do something like that to other black women and then come and do a song, say something like, sis, what are you saying? What are you really saying? Huh? They had the guy come in. The guy, you know, he was like telling them like, you know, these women don't have never made no much money like that. They've never been on a production level of this scale. They have never been on anything of a scale such as this. So, okay, if y'all were told that y'all got to come in and bring the drama, you don't do it in a disrespectful manner for which we can see your true colors and understand why you will never make it in the industry. I don't care how well you can sing. I don't care how well you can write. I don't care if you can produce. You don't come into a show and tell the producer that in this house, I'm the producer. Like, which one of them sleeping with Carlos King, allegedly? I don't know. The internet is ablaze right now. This, the internet is talking about this. The internet is saying they they must have been uh, one of them must be have been with Cosine. Cosine is a producer because this man is producing the song, making the song. She goes behind him and produces it her way. And when he comes, she's playing her version. And he's like, "No, stop! This is you know this is the man's job. This is how he eats. This is his livelihood." So his schedule is based upon what he's getting paid for. If he got paid to show one day or two days or three days, what are you doing? You think you could go to Sony Arista or Universal, RCA, or any one of them places, and they put you in the studio, and you tell the producer, oh, in this house, I am the producer, and you looking for producer credit? Where they do that at? With people who have been in the industry? People who have this as a career? This was a direct hit, a, 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 a damn, um, you sending, you sending, you sending, shots fired at the man's career like oh this is that and then you're doing say something it, you're very 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 hypocritical very hypocritical and, and 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 excuse me hypocritical and audacious i don't understand where you female find the temerity to disrespect the man in such a manner disrespect his job disrespect his position and then have the nerve to write a song, say something, talking about woman empowerment and Keely. Keely, 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 Keely. Keely, it is so plain to see that everybody who came in the house have some kind of issues. Keely, I don't know what your issues are. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what they've done to you. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going go, I'm to I'm go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Y'all got to give me some time. Cause I'm getting my piece back and I'm moving uh, very soon. And once I do, I know that I will be fully at peace to be able to give you these video, give you these tea, sip coffee, drink the tea and lavish together because we have a lot to talk about. I'm going to be doing Keely from um, 3LW. So we're going to put that on the, on the calendar along with the Michael Jackson, the Kelly Rowland part two and three. And we're going to move forward with some other ones that I want to do. But a friend of mine asked me to do Michael Jackson. So I'm going to do a Michael Jackson piece um, coming up in the month of September. I'm going to be rolling out those for you. All right. So these people here, um, as I said, I didn't like they. Okay. I didn't like the wom that the woman had to leave feeling disrespected as 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 for the levels of uh, stars and, and the legends and the legacy that they carry to be placed in a position like this, that they they did not sign up for a reality show um, contest or competition. It didn't sound like that. When you said you wanted to form a super group and then you come in the first two days talking about, oh, let's separate the group and let's do stuff like that and the weak, and, and calling them the weakest link and breaking them down. The women have already been breaking the, broken down in their groups that they were in. They came for something new. Let me tell you who I had to look at. I had to look at Pamela. 
And I really did the show because I wanted to talk about Pamela most of all. Pamela came in from the first day and Pamela said God told her to come to this reality show. So when she got a phone call, God told her, yes, go, because God has something for her at this reality show. And she came to see what God had. Mind you, she is a Christian now and she is not prepared to do a lot of things as a Christian person. So you got to know that you know that you know. Okay? She goes in. She tells them God told her to come. She's preaching from the first day. She lets them know, okay, we're doing this song. They're talking about these hoes keep talking. I'm not going to be on the track. And I'm okay with not being on this track. If they go, y'all ain't got to change the word. I'm just not going to be on the track. So from they calling the woman the hoes, I'm not doing that. She backed up off the track. All right? They had um, Keely come, sitting there, smoking a hawk. Not Keely, uh, Aubrey rubbing her leg down, rubbing her knee down, rubbing her knee down. So Pam says, you know what? I'm just going to have to say something right now. She says, well, you know what? I uh, used to be gay and I'm not gay anymore because God delivered me from that. And um, I don't want to have any, don't touch me, don't touch my personal space. And I got to make sure that I do not put myself in a position as the star and the legend. And because of the legacy that she has, that she doesn't want to be viewed in the wrong way she let it be known don't touch me keely jumps up saying oh you made a homophobic comment come in and all this how she gonna be homophobic she says she was gay and she feel like she got delivered that is not homophobic because if she was homophobic she could have never go live with, lie with another woman period eh? homophobic is people who have a problem with you know lesbian people are you know uh, um you know the lg the, the, the alphabet people those people is the people that you have a problem with when you're homophobic. You're not homophobic if you was one of them people. Come talk to you now. Keely, what's wrong with you? You come in the house and you say, you know, you're not there to sing. You're there as a creative director. You have no creative direction. And you don't have no creative directivity. Right? And all you come to do is stir, 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 stir. With your twisted brain. And your brain very twisted. And you think that you have the ability to sway these grown women to do something, anything at all? And you have the nerve to jump up and try to put Pam in a bad light, not Pamela Long. Though the whole industry knows about Pamela Long. Are you serious? You need to stop it. Keely, we're very disgusted by you. I think the whole internet is talking about you and your ways, your hypocritical ways, your flip-flopping ways, your ways of coming here kiki kiki ki, drop something here and go over there kiki drop the woman had to hear people talking about them loud at the top of their voices it was very disrespectful i do i i i i, I watched it i got a couple laughs but i was i was disrespected for my legends bet at bet i was truly disrespected for my legends i hope you're gonna put them together on a show and give them something that makes sense that builds them up for the legends that they are the same way how you come and you give legendary awards, diva awards, and all these awards. You need to award these women who came in knowing what they had gotten out of girl groups where they had to argue, fight, push, and 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 and, and, and sacrifice blood, sweat, and tears just to get where they at. To come into a situation like this and be blindsided, I am appalled. Truly, truly, truly appalled. I'm appalled at Keila's behavior. Coming in talking about um, Pamela is a homophobe. And when she seen that everybody was not with her, that's when she had to like slowly shut her mouth and walk away. And then in the midst of the argument between Cosine and, you know, uh, Felicia, Fallon, Felicia, Felicia, Fallon, Fallon, Felicia, Felicia, Fallon. They one person anyway. They're not two individuals. They're one person anyway. Just call them Felicia Fallon. Let's call them the hybrid. The hybrid, Felicia Fallon, were arguing with uh, the guy co signed the producer, disrespecting his whole career, disrespecting his whole status as whoever he is. I don't, I, I don't care who he is. He could be anybody. Didn't your parents teach you that you should treat even the janitor with respect? Like, where did you learn this behavior, woman? 
It's uncalled for. So, um, um, Misha comes in. She's like, wait, what's going on? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. What's going on with Kosa? Like, what's everybody's doing? And um, Keely's like, yeah, but you're with us. No, Keely, we are not with you. We at home are not with you either because we don't know what Felicia the hybrid is doing. We are not with the hybrid. We're not just going to go with you because you're a woman and you come with this feminist feminism and this feminine behavior. Ain't nothing wrong with being a feminist or a feminism, but you do not force yourself onto anybody. You serve your ways. And because you're bisexual, you're, 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 you, 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 and, 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 and parts of you are still in the closet. You feel like you have to make a stance for something that nobody is fighting you with. Cosine did nothing. He did nothing to the hybrid for them to behave like that and for the whole house to turn on him. And yes, he did send flowers. And yes, he did send a care basket or care package or whatever. And that was very nice of him after he had been duly uh, disrespected. And that goes to show or whatever. This the, the, It just shows of whatever relationship the woman, the hybrid woman have with production or someone else that gives them that privileged feeling and a privileged position that they could come into the house and place themselves in a position where they took even his job. Huh? Took Cosine's job. Took all the songs. Took all the writing rights because nobody else could write. Because you're making them feel like they're nobody anyway. But Pam. Pam goes in the studio. Pam, Pam goes in the studio and... She's not on the uh, picture, but she goes in the studio. They start, she starts humming this melody. And she writes this beautiful song. And they do this beautiful song together called Only God Knows. And I don't want to play the song because I don't want YouTube al YouTube's algorithm to, you know, put a copyright block on my, my um, video. But I needed to go find the song. They call the group Blueprint. The song is called Only God Knows. I don't want to live without you. I don't want to be without you. I watched Encore last night and I listened to the song all night long. All night long. I played it all night long over and over again because when i find a song i play it over and over again and i played only god knows over and over again i'm gonna share it on my media i'm gonna share the song with you and i hope you go and find it for yourself and find the song pam said god brought her there pam came into the secular group that they tried to make and said god said to come goes into the studio creates a gospel song Everybody was on the song, but everybody started leaving. Abby left first because she was disgusted. She left in her Uber. She quit. Um, next to go was uh, Nivea because it was a whole blowout with Nivea. Nivea was about to beat somebody down. And the disrespect was too much. And it got to a level. And then Nivea felt like she had to defend Misha and Irish because it was just that blatant. And she just said, you know what? Let me leave because... I'm not, she's never been in a girl group. She's a solo artist and she's not used to this period. So it was just like, oh no, let me leave because I don't have to deal with this. She have, they have, these people have their royalties. They don't have to deal with this. She left. Um, then Misha and uh, Irish were about to beat those, these two sisters to smithereens. Them two grown women was going to put a beating on these two young girls like it was Sunday school at church on a Sunday back in 1985. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They went home. They ended up with these two young women, Shamari, Keely, and Pam. They were the last left in the house. They ended up uh, giving us a couple songs. And my next favorite song is called Birds Eye View. 
So I want you to go check it out because it's really nice. Check out their song. The songs are really good. They're really talented. These women can really sing. These two women can really sing too. They, these women can really sing. But Pam fulfilled her purpose and the end of the show, the credits rolling up, it says Pam quit the group to go sing gospel. Now look at God. You got to leave people in their in they stuff. You have to leave people in their stuff. If you see somebody in their stuff, you pray for them. Do not insert yourself because you don't know what God is doing. This woman left out of her house. So God said to come to this place with these secular people in the house, forming a girl group of women who are not Christian, women who are not like her. And she placed herself in a, in a space. And I know she was in fear of what she could come into, the alcohol, the this, the that. That's present when you come into places like this. And she carried herself upright. She came and she fulfilled her purpose. She made a gospel song. And the song is playing and it's reverberating in my spirit. And I'd like to share it with you. Only God knows. Only God knows why we do what we do. Only God knows. Okay? He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. He works out everything to the good of them that are loving, loved that love him and are called according to his purpose. Coming along is called according to his purpose. And this song shows it. And her going to go do her gospel song. Uh, guys, I want us to find Pamela Long. I want us to find her song and her albums when it comes out. I want us to stream Pamela Long. I want us to give these people the, the, the love and, and the flowers that they deserve after such a disrespectful event. I want us to lift them up. These songs... And, I, you know, it's hard for me to uh, say something is the a woman empowerment song they, they said they made. Um, Skeletons is a really good song, too, because, as I said, this woman can really sing. So it's something to look into. The show is it's, it's a good show. It makes you laugh and everything, but it's just like just the disrespect makes you a little bit angry, you know, if you're not from that era. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So um, it was very, very interesting to see um this play out especially with how i have already discussed with you labrishers about the music industry and about how the industry breaks you down tears you down and then throws you away and you become a has-been and you become a where are they now story you bring in these people or these where are they now stories and you have these younger um people who they're not that great looking. Their bodies aren't that great. They have nice faces, but they do not have nice personalities. They can sing, but their personality is shit. Um, excuse me. And um, you put them against them and you pit them against each other um, and you equip them with you know everything they need to make their way out. And then the people that are coming in that didn't know that they're in a competition are totally um, broken down in their spirit. And you your BET, Black Entertainment Television. It's sad. Uh, Mr. Curtis King, at Mr. Curtis King, I would like to, you to find a way to fix it. Like, present these people back in front of us. Is there a reunion show? Like, what what, what, what are we having? What's going to make us feel better about our artists and our legends? What, 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 what way can you find to show us our artists and our legends in a good light? So we can we, we we can honor them and revere them. That we we don't have to look at them like they're less than because they're not a certain image. Or they're not willing to do certain things. Hmm? What will you do? Guys, it's been Coffee Tier Labrish. Let me know how you feel about it. Um, hit me in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Encore, BT's Encore, if you've watched it. Um, go watch it and come back and let me know. Let me know what you think about the music, what you think about the song um, Only God Knows and Bird's Eye View, which are my favorite skeletons, too. It's like five, six songs, so it's not a lot of songs. I did um, I'm download them because I do like them, and I like their voices, and I like their voices together. And at the end of the day... You know, it's a beautiful sound, but I'm not going to, um, I would not, you know, promote these people because I do not like their attitudes. I don't think they're going to go very far with um, this. I don't know who they think they could work with again after this. I don't know if they think they have established themselves in some way. I don't know who would allow them to do such a thing after what they've done. Um, but yes, 
So um, that's it for the Encore, um, BET Presents Encore review um, and commentary piece. Um, hashtag BET Presents Encore. Um, hashtag C-T-O-L-L-L-C. Hashtag this is Coffee Tea or Labrish, where we drink coffee, sip tea, and we labrish about people with Mona Indefatigable Heights. Remember, shopping spare for me. I'm a Mona Tree, seven out of key, Kata, four plus three. All right. Um, guys, I want to thank you for listening to me. I want to thank you for um, giving me your energy as always. I want to thank you for being my company. I want to thank you for the ones that I'm sharing myself with. Um, I do, I am really concentrating on my YouTube because YouTube is for me is really like strangers. It's not like IG where you know people and people know you or you see them. It's just like I talk to you but I don't like I don't I don't hear you like that and it's better for me because of the space that I'm in and the spiritual space that I'm in and I love it because I get to just, you know, talk and give you what I what I what I've come to bring and um you are strangers to me. Um and sometimes you're not really accepted where you come from. Sometimes you're not accepted or you're not appreciated amongst the familiar faces. Sometimes you're more appreciated when you meet new people, more appreciated by new people, by strangers. And because of that, I am happy that I have a form on a platform that we can speak to people about the things that I want to share with you. I want to thank you guys for subscribing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to hit the notification button. Don't forget to keep watching Coffee Tea or Labrish. Don't forget to keep watching Coffee Tea or Labrish because we have better and greater things to come. Wait till we move. When we move, it's going to be like, I can't tell you. It's going to be awesome. Um, you're going to love my background once because I'm going to have a new canvas to, um, you know, prepare my space. You see how I have a new light. I have... I have, oh God, I have an ultra light. I love it. The little light that I had before does that light no justice. I'm just comfortable right now because when I'm doing the presented, presenting, it's a different type of um, way than when I'm doing the, um, the um, just giving you the tea, which I'm going to come back. I'm going to give you the tea on Jasmine's Cabaret and Zola. And I'm also going to give you my review on Spice. I'll probably give you the review on Spice tomorrow because um, I want to be done tonight. Um, I want to thank you once again, guys. Thank you for watching Coffee to Your Labrish. Like, share, subscribe. Mwah. I remember that about that about that style.